And I can think of at least four occasions where man was able to speak to him face to face and he changed God's mind. Talk about the creator of the universe, changed your mind. Anyhow, he, he is love and to sh he made this creation, he made it good, very good, and he placed, he made a, a good garden, the Garden of Eden, and placed man in that garden so that he could share his love with man and so that man could share his love with each other. And they were able to walk together in the cool of the day and speak face to face as friends. Well, God had one rule, said, you cannot eat from the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil. And it was a test, you know, mm -hmm. to see if we would be obedient. And <clears throat> Satan entered the garden and twisted God's words and tricked man to eating that tree and sin was found in man. And God saw that he could not allow man to have access to the tree of life in this condition, so he removed himself, and he put angels to guard the way. Ever since then, we've been separated from communion with God and separated from his love, and we just seek that missing component in relationships, entertainment, drugs and alcohol, stuff that's never going to equal that missing love of God. So men started creating other men in their own image, and they had children, and their children had children. And God saw that the thoughts of men was evil continuously, and he repented of making man. But he found one man in his family who was open to God, and he sent a flood to clear, to destroy all of creation, and he saved that one family. And that was Noah and his family, but the thing is, Noah started sinning again after the flood, and his children sinned, and... God saw that the problem wasn't with men and they making other men in their image. The problem wasn't with creation. It was, the problem was with their heart. And he had a plan from the very beginning to send his son to live a holy and righteous life as an example of uh, to us to show us how to love God and how to love each other. <clears throat> the problem with sin is we sit here and compare ourselves to each other instead of to a holy and righteous God. You say, you know what, I might tell some lies, but this guy's a thief. Kleptomaniac says, I, I may like stealing, but at least I'm not a drug dealer to destroying people's lives. Drug dealer says, I might sell some drugs just to get by, but I'm not a murderer. He steals people's lives. The murderer says, I'm not as bad as this guy. He's a pedophile. Pedophile says, uh, this guy's worse. He's a homosexual or something. You know, we're just sitting here trying to rationalize and justify ourselves. Whenever compared to the holy and righteous God, he says our filthy, our righteousness is filthy rags, right? The only way we can get back to the communion with God is through the Son. And Jesus, even though he lived a holy and righteous life and never sinned, he got baptized in water for righteousness' sake. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him, and he was able to preach the gospel of the coming kingdom with power, to raise the, the dead, to heal the sick, cast out demons. And he went around preaching this message, and men hated him. They ganged up against him, brutally murdered him. The Bible says sin is the, uh, the wages of sin is death. That's eternal death and separation from God. But so when they buried him in the grave for three days, death could not hold him because he never sinned. And he rose from the dead after three days. He said, I have defeated death. I have the keys to death and hell. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. He went around for another 40 days ministering to his disciples and appeared to over 500 people saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Get baptized in water for the remission of your sins. He said, I'm going away. I'm going to the Father. And he sits on the throne to this day waiting for to return in power and judgment. When he did that, he was able to send his Holy Spirit to us. That's why he did it. So that he could send out his Holy Spirit to live within us instead of just one man going around. Now we can all go around. We can all go around and preach the coming kingdom, say repent, turn to God, get baptized in water for the remission of your sins, so you bury that sinful nature and you're seen as clean and righteous in God's eyes, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Someday he is going to take come and, and he is going to destroy the rest of creation. So I have a question for you, and this is how you use these cards here, is... You say, um, this is the four conditions of men. And I like, i seen Brian Rocker did this recently. He actually put a fifth one there. So, 
this condition is closed off to God. They have a heart of stone. They, they're not interested in God. They are interested in the things of this world. They love their sin. They don't want anything to do with God. This condition is someone who has repented. They're tired of the things of this world. They're turning to God, and they've been given a heart of flesh that they know what this was right and wrong, and they still may struggle with sin because we're born with the nature of sin, and we're slaves to sin. That's what they said when Jesus came to set the captives free. That's to set us free from sin and death. So this person has repented and been baptized so that, that they say it's a likeness of death, burial, and resurrection of, his, of, his, of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So we are a new creature. So you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven without being born of water and of spirit. Well, this is the being born of water. It's not like the mistake Nicodemus made and said being born the first time in water is our earthly birth. No, Jesus corrected him. The born of water is this water baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. So that whenever you look like you can't see it, just like cancer. When you look, you can't find it. So this person here has received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this can actually happen anywhere in here. The only important thing is you have repentance before baptism. This baptism of the Holy Spirit gives us this, the power to remain righteous in a sinful world and the power to pray for people to be healed of sickness, to raise the dead and cast out demons. That is so that they are ready to receive the good news, the gospel of the coming kingdom. So that's what we're commanded to do in the Great Commission at the end of Matthew and another gospel. I think Mark actually includes it there too. But um, this person is actually going out as a disciple, an apostle, whatever, and spreading that good news, actively working to increase the kingdom. This person is born again, but maybe they're hiding their bushel under a light or inside of a church building instead of going into the harvest. So which one of these are you? Well, I don't know that I would classify it as hiding 